First, you're gonna need D rings. I would recommend getting bridge connectors. They're so much easier. I'll insert a picture of those. Next, you're gonna need purse feet for the bottom of your bag. Swivel hooks to connect your chain or strap. A zipper, mine was a 10 inch, but I would recommend like a 12 to 16 inch. A Sharpie or a pen just to make marking. Pliers, I would recommend something way better than this. These were so old and rusty and y'all gonna see me struggle. You're going to need a tape measure. Mine's retractable, but any kind can pretty much work. Something sharp. This isn't all, but anything just sharp to poke holes with. Your chain for your straps, or if you want to use leather straps, just whatever works best for you. I'm using chain. Your basketball, of course. That's the main thing. A leather hole puncher, I definitely recommend this to save your hands, save a whole bunch of time, so yeah. You'll also need scissors, needle and thread, or glue if you prefer to glue your zipper down instead of sewing it. So yeah, let's get right into it. It was at this moment, I knew, I messed up. Do not, I repeat, do not repeat this next step that I'm about to do. So you actually want to poke the hole in the top of the basketball and not the bottom. So now I'm just taking my zipper and seeing how wide I need to make the hole. This is why I recommend um, getting a longer zipper, something that stretches from one side of the basketball to the other, just so when you want to open it up, it opens a lot more than what mine did. So now I'm just measuring like three inches from each side or like two and a half just to um, mark where I need to cut the basketball open. Yours may vary depending on the length of zipper that you have. So next is doing the ring for the side strap and this is where I would definitely recommend the bridge connectors because this part is so hard. I saw on YouTube some girl said to use D-rings. I don't know who she was but I wouldn't recommend it because they are so hard trying to open up. We gonna make it work though. So now you just need to put your D-ring on the basketball to measure out where the hole should be and I'm doing that with the Sharpie. Thank you. 
So next you're gonna take your awl and poke a hole where you drew the line at. And I use my scissors just to open up the hole a little bit more. If you have the bridge connectors, your next step will be different. You would just um, insert the screws and screw on the bridge connector and your life will be so much easier. But we're difficult, so we're going to use the D-rings. After you finally get the D-ring open, you're gonna pinch the basketball, insert one side, and then insert the other side. Next, you just want to close the D-ring up and you are good to go. Now you want to do the rings for the shorter straps. It's the exact same process. I'm just measuring down um, an inch from the top and kind of like to where my zipper ends is where I put mine. You can put yours wherever you would like, but that's just where I place mine. Now you're going to take your hole puncher to punch the holes for the ring at the top. I use the hole puncher because it's a lot easier to use, especially with an opening. Um, you can still use your awl or whatever you have that's sharp, but I would recommend using the hole puncher. This time you're going to pull the ring all the way through and turn it around because it's easier to close when it's on the outside. I don't know what I thought these pliers was going to do, but it didn't do what I wanted to do. So I used the leather um, puncher to close all the rings. So whatever works for you is how you can do it. So after you close it, you just want to turn it around, repeat that process for the rest of them, and the hard part is over.
If you use the bridge connectors, yours will still look exactly the same as if you use the D-ring. So either one works, it's just the D-rings are a lot harder. So the next step will be to do the purse feet. So where the stopper is in the bottom of the ball, I measured an inch and a half um, on both sides and made a mark and then I measured down an inch from both sides and that is where I placed my purse feet. So the marks for my purse feet are like a fourth of an inch wide so after I poke the hole I use my scissors and cut slits so that my purse feet could slide into the basketball a lot easier. So the way these purse feet work is once you insert the peg into the basketball, you put down the metal part, the little circle thing at the top, and then you open the feet and press them down and that's how they hold. Two more steps left, we are almost done. Now it's time to do the zipper. After I did my initial cut for the zipper, I realized that I wanted more of the gold teeth to show and more of the zipper tape, so I just cut it open some more just for aesthetic purposes. So at this point, if you choose to glue your zipper down instead of sew it, you would just apply the glue, put the zipper either under or over it, and then hold it down until it is stuck. But for the overachievers like me, you're going to measure a fourth of an inch spaces throughout the whole opening of the basketball. So now you're just going to grab your handy dandy hole punch and punch holes where you made all the dots. This is why I definitely recommend the hole punch because doing this with an awl or some scissors would just take forever and by this point your hands probably already tore up anyway. So just to save your hands, invest in a hole puncher.
Okay, now to sew the zipper on. It looks tricky, but I promise it's very simple. So you're going to stick the needle up through the hole. And then once you have it through the hole, you want to put it into the following hole. And then you're going to put it back through the hole that you just came out of. By doing this, it creates a continuous line of stitches, making it look really seamless. Um, if you put it back up through the hole and then your thread comes out, just repeat the process. It's just because you went back through the exact same hole. So um, it tends to come out sometimes, but once you actually do it and you kind of like jump over thread a little bit, it'll be fine. At this point, y'all, excuse my crusty fingers because they've been through a lot. But now I'm just taking my silver rings and um, silver hooks and attaching them to the D rings. And last but not least is the chain. You can do yours however you want to. I have different sizes, different colors, and you can see me just trying to figure out what I want to do because I'm really indecisive. So I don't know. Just play around with it and have fun. You're just going to take your pliers, open it up, connect it to the silver ring, close it, and it's as simple as that. At this point, I just need to throw these pliers away because they didn't help me do nothing. So, back to the hole puncher.
You also want to make sure that when you attach the other end of your chain that all of your links are laying the exact same way all of them are laying flat so that you don't have any like twists or little kinks in your chain and it just lays a lot better. If you followed this little tutorial, DIY, whatever, be sure to tag me on Instagram at kishantra.marae so I can see what y'all came up with and see how they turned out. Bye!